again and welcome to Hacker World Unlimited. I'll show you quickly how to make an inverter. You need a voltage source or voltage sources in normally batteries. You need transformers or a transformer. You need an oscillator. You need drivers. By this we mean tra uh, MOSFETs or transistors. So let's go quickly into the transformer. For the transformer, you need a step up transformer. So, because we're using 12 volts battery, we're going to use 12 volts transformer. It's a center tra tapped transformer. The primary torus ratio versus the secondary torus ratio determines your step up factor. So, in this case, you're using a 12 volts uh, transformer, but the output could be 220, 120, 110, or 240, whatever voltage you want to have at the output. Make sure that the torus ratio corresponds to to the uh, the expected output from the given input okay so let's look at the oscillator for this oscillator we're using uh 4049 it has six inverters inside it's called hex inverter so one two three and the other three are used for other things um for this circuit when this output is one this inverter here we change the signal and it will be zero and this one will show up here as one so because it goes straight there's no inverter in this path but there's inverter in that path so you have this changed um so in other words if i have positive going signal here it will be turned to a negative going signal after going through this inverter but that same positive going signal remains the same right over here now another way to configure this is to configure two inverters as a buffer to invert another two inverters as a bu another buffer this is phase a and phase b similar to phase a and phase b over there now there is a different component you see here it's the same as this because it has the same bubbles that they have which shows their inverters but it has a different color and the reason we give it a different color is because it's not part of the original hex inverter nevertheless it is an inverter so what, why you need this when the signal is here it's one it goes through this inverter becomes a zero here and then it's re-inverted here it becomes a one that one goes through here and it's a zero so this and this are similar the only difference is the signal is buffered and it's good when you're using transistors but for mosfets not that necessary the mosfets are field effect transistors metallic oxide field effect transistors so they merely need to sense the fields and they will act accordingly unlike transistors that need the current to be buffered now this is the configuration you have the gate uh, the drain and the source uh, for the transistor you have the base the the collector and the emitter this diode symbol you see here is part of the internal configuration of this uh, MOSFET. For a transistor, you might have to put an external diode if it doesn't come with one already. Make sure you check the schematic if you're using a transistor. Now here we have the, the oscillator, we have the, the, uh, the, the phase translators if you like because we can have phase A and phase B. And then I remember for MOSFETs which you are using, you don't really need this uh, elegant design you can just use one inverter here and then the other signal goes directly from here now right here we have 47 ohms resistors leading to the gate of each of the MOSFET if you have multiple MOSFETs this is very very important for single MOSFETs you might not need it but for multiple MOSFETs when you have MOSFET, MOSFETs in parallel you need a gate resistor for each MOSFET this will help to equalize the difference in gate resistances. Now you have these pull down resistors. They are used to pull down each gate when the signal for that uh, phase is zero. So when this signal, when this phase is zero, this pulls the gate down, make sure that it's actually grounded while this is one. You want the MOSFET to be on one at a time. And that that's your transistor right there at the output we have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor but it's a 4000 volts you can use a thousand volts and upwards very high voltage but 0.1 it's kind of low pass filter right there you don't want heating sounds in your appliances in your fans and other things you want to filter out the frequencies and make sure you have just the low frequency which is about 50 to 60 hertz right there
so your output will be 220 if you're using a 220 volts transformer now let's go back to that a different kind of inverter this inverter here um, you can achieve this by using another hex inverter just use one of the inverters or you can use a transistor inverter this transistor will take an input signal and make it a zero when it's a one it will be a zero when it's a zero it will be a one when there's no signal here this is open circuit this resistor pulls up this this uh, line and the gate connected here will be seen a one when this is a one this will close and this any gate any signal connected here will see a zero because this will effectively close so that's how it functions as an inverter you can use any general purpose NPN transistor you'll be fine now to determine the power of your inverter you need the current and the voltage and of course you have to factor in power uh, uh, efficiency uh, if your efficiency is 100% then this is what you need but sometimes efficiency is not 100% so uh, consider efficiency of 75% when you when you make this design so the current um, is unknown and the voltage is known so V is 220 so power is current which is unknown times 220 of course times efficiency now um, power over 220 is current so when you whatever power you want make sure that you get uh, whatever power you want make sure that you, you supply equivalent current and again I say factor in the the uh, the efficiency compassion so make sure your battery can supply the current and i would say uh, multiply that by the uh, divide current by efficiency so if your efficiency of 75 percent you'll be talking about 0 0.75 so it'll be current over 0 0.75 so you need something more than uh, 0 0.75 and then uh, you need something more than i sorry and then you make sure that your transformer can handle the, the current. You make sure that your MOSFETs can also handle your power. And that is it pretty much. There is no uh, no so much about it. Um, whatever um, you want to design for, if you want to design for, uh, let's say an example, you want to design for a one kilo ohm, a, sorry, one kilowatt inverter, you make sure that 1000 divided by 220 that will be your current then divide that also by your by your uh, efficiency and that will give you the amount of current that should be looking for i think it should it should it should uh be good enough it should serve us to to get an idea output um, we should expect uh, our battery to supply about uh, 4 point you will need uh, to divide that by your efficiency and uh, which is 75 percent and you'll be looking at something like six amps if I'm not mistaken six amps or more make sure your battery can supply six amps and you will be fine and most batteries can do that. Most batteries can supply up to 100 amps and pay hours. That means uh, you can get a lot of time from that inverter. So that is it pretty much right there. You can make your inverter. If you're looking for a two, a two um, kilowatt inverter, you should be looking at something around 12 to 13 amps and so forth. All right. This is again Hacker World Unlimited uh, coming to you direct from Canada. Thanks. Bye.